All right, students, today we're going to talk about why do atoms want to form chemical bonds? Or uh, I guess a better way up there, there, the essential question is why do atoms form chemical bonds? So let's just start with a couple statements. Number one, all atoms, quote unquote, want to have a full outer energy level. Now, I say want there, but atoms don't really want to do anything. Um, a full outer energy level, or the valence shell, or valence energy level, is really just, just what's considered to be stable. So we wouldn't say something like this either. Um, if you're thinking about a chair sitting, uh, you tilted back in a chair where you just put two feet on it, you know that that's unstable. And if you let it go, the chair is going to rotate forward. So you wouldn't say that the chair wants to have all four on the floor. You just know that that's the... Um, what happens with all the forces that are acting on it. So in that same way, when we say elements want or atoms want to have a full energy level, it's really just that's what's considered stable in nature. Um, number two, the noble gases are the only ones that have a full valence energy level. So if we take a look there, the noble gases are in group eight all have a full outer energy level and um, as it turns out we call this the octet rule because they have eight valence electrons in that uh, in that outer shell and that's just uh, what happens to be very stable all right well what about for the other elements well all other elements must steal lose or share electrons in order to have that stable valence shell of the of the eight electrons all right so let's take a look at a couple examples. Uh, the ones I have up there on the periodic table are sodium over in group one. So over here we got sodium and oxygen and chlorine. And I think to get started, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with chlorine there in group 17. So it has seven valence electrons. So let's take a look at what's going on um, with chlorine. Well, if we were to draw the dot structure for chlorine, like I just did right there, it would have seven dots around it. And you see that it has one short from having eight, uh, which would be stable. So what does chlorine tend to do? Chlorine tends to steal electrons from other elements in order to fill that shell. Now, if it did this, it gained an extra electron, which is an extra electric charge, uh, negative charge. And so chlorine becomes a uh, negative ion. In this case, the, since it stole one electron, it would be a negative one charged ion. Okay. Take a look here at oxygen. Oxygen's in the group next to it, uh, number six there. So it's going to have six valence electrons. And so we draw the dot structure. And this time when we take a look, we notice that oxygen would need to get two electrons from somewhere else to complete that uh, outer energy level and uh, to have that octet fill up. So that's exactly what oxygen will tend to do from time to time. It will steal two extra electrons from somewhere else, uh, one that goes in each of those spots. And by doing this, since it gained two negative charges, it's a negative ion, but this time it is a negative two charge up on the top. All right, so what I got here is it says chlorine and oxygen are nonmetals, and they only need to get a few extra electrons to fill their outer shell uh, to be eight. Um, nonmetals tend to gain electrons to become stable. So up here on my little mini periodic table, what I drew was um, I just put over there for the nonmetals. Nonmetals tend to gain electrons. So let's take a look then over here for sodium. Uh, zoom out just a bit. There we go. Sodium, on the other hand, um, is going to be a little bit different. Sodium is in group one. All right, so there it is, one valence electron. It's in group one. And so what it would need to do is, if you take a look here, is it would have to gain seven electrons in order to fill that outer energy level. However, because the outer energy level, um, all, under the, all other energy levels leading up to that one are already full, Sodium has a full energy level underneath it, and if it could just somehow get rid of that one electron on the outside energy level in its current valence shell, it would be gone, and it would reveal the um, full energy level underneath. And that is what sodium and other metals tend to do. They tend to lose electrons. Uh, sodium gets rid of its one electron because it lost a negative, it's gonna become positively charged. So it'll be a positive ion, and in this case, since it lost one electron, it would be positively charged all right so what we can do with that now is we can take a look and um, we can start taking a look at the periodic table and see for each group the types of ions that they would form 
So if we take a look here, I put the valence electrons for group 1, 2, and then 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 already along the top. And let's take a look at the um, ions they would form. So sodium, we just said, is going to lose one electron, so it would be a 1 plus ion. All the elements in group 2, which is just one over, they would have two valence electrons. So when they lose their uh, electrons, they would lose two negatives, making them two positive. Now we skip the transition metals for right now because the rules get more complicated. Um, it's not terribly complicated, you're totally capable of it. Uh, but for right now, let's just stick with the, uh, with the main group. So let's go to group 13, the one there with three valence electrons, in which case it would uh, lose three electrons and then therefore be a three plus. All right, go over to group 17 then, where we did chlorine. Chlorine would gain one. Oop, I guess I misspoke. Um, I'll just put them up here. It'll make more sense. Group 17, it only needs one electron, so it's going to gain one, become negative one. Group 16, that's oxygen there, is going to need two, so it's going to steal two and become negative two. And then group five, or group 15, has five valence electrons, so it would need to gain three. Now this is where it gets a little bit weird when you get to group four there. Well, what do they do? Well, they can do either or. They can either lose or they can gain. It doesn't much matter which one it is, and I notice that I look at my notes and it's off a little bit. So let's add that little plus sign there. Um, oop, wrong color. Oh boy. Four negative or uh, four positive. So the elements in group um, 14 sometimes gain, sometimes lose, depending on what they, what they uh, bond with. All right, so let's take a look at an example of, this was all about why do atoms form chemical bonds. So let's take a look at an example of this. It all has to do with getting that stable outer energy level and we see here that metals tend to lose whereas non-metals tend to gain in order to get this. So here's an example I want to take a look at. So table salt. Uh, chemical formula for table salt is NaCl. Well one of the questions you could ask yourself is why is this a one-to-one -one ratio? Like why is it one Na, one sodium with one chlorine? Why isn't it two or why isn't it three? Um, why isn't Na2? Uh, and reason for this, it makes sense if you come down here and take a look at how this partnership works. So like we talked about before, we said that sodium tends to lose an electron. But sodium can't just lose that electron um, willy-nilly. In fact, if it were to give that electron up, it would become um, positively charged and the electron would come right back. Sodium's got to find another atom that's willing to take that. And so what happens here is sodium is able to transfer one electron over to chlorine. Now in the process of this, we talked about this before, by sodium getting rid of this one electron and going here, sodium's outer energy level disappears, leaving us with a complete energy level underneath. All right. Chlorine gets that extra electron, and what happens to it? It gets the complete outer energy level. Both are feeling pretty good about this. But because we've lost or gained electrons, sodium, having lost an electron, becomes a positively charged ion. Chlorine, having gained an electron, becomes a negatively charged ion because, once again, it gained those negative charges. Remember, it was an electron that was being transferred here. right? There we go. Um, and then what happens when you have a positive next to a negative? Well, opposites attract in science, so the positive charge corrects it over, um, and the two want to be closer together. All right, so how do we show this, the final thing? Sodium um, transfers its one electron to chlorine, and what we end up getting is a Lewis dot structure that would look like this. Chlorine is excited to have or stable when it has eight electrons around it. Sodium is um, okay with getting rid of it because it's got a full complete shell underneath. And when we have these electrons between the two, what we have right there is a chemical bond. And that's it. All right, so hopefully that helped out. If you have any questions, come see me.